Well, I'm quite moved to to speak after all of you. And I think it changes a lot when we speak from different places. So I will tell a story that I've been telling in other places, but the energy here is so different. So let's see how it goes. Um, 15 years ago, I was um, enjoying one of the best moments of my professional life. I had co-founded the first digital agency in Brazil. In a time, internet was only accessible inside universities. It was the early 90s. And then I sold my agency to a big advertising network worldwide, and I managed their internet operation in Latin America. I traveled a lot, I met amazing people, and I was creating the future, and that moved me forward. Until a day, my partner, and I, we got news that would change our lives very deeply. I was pregnant with my first daughter, and Lucas got a diagnosis of a very aggressive type of cancer. And the doctor said he would have only two years to leave. And it took us many, many months going to different doctors and exams until we found out the diagnosis was wrong. He didn't have cancer. But at that time, the transformation inside us had already happened. And at that moment, we stopped living the future to live the present. And for us, the present had a name that is Santa Paz. So Lucas had a childhood dream of living aboard a sailboat. And when we thought we wouldn't have a tomorrow, we bought a sailboat and moved to live on it with our one year and one month old daughter, Clara. And now it's been 13 years since we started to navigate and we live it on board six of those years. And it's been more than 2,000 days looking at the horizon. And I think it's really hard to express the impact that those days had in my life, and hopefully we'll have in our daughter's lives. We visited more than 30 countries. We started in England, and then I crossed the Atlantic in the fifth month of pregnancy of our second daughter. We moved to a small city in the coast of Brazil called Paraty, where we co-founded a school and got passionate about education. Then we set sail again and we sailed to New Zealand where we have been living for the past four years. And when I look back to my journey after these 13 years that I have been experiencing new ways of living and working and being, I see that the way that we look into the world invites new perspectives. So depending on the way we look, possibilities exist or they don't exist. And that's what I would like to share a little bit, how I learned to develop a way to look that see new possibilities, even if when life brought some challenges that seemed impossible to overcome. And the first thing that I learned was the importance of silence. Because if we want to, to have a new way of looking, we need first to make space for it. And the sea helped me very much to find that silence. So since I was very, very young, I, I loved to dive. And I didn't know at that time, but when I submerged, it was as if time stopped. I was just five, I didn't know that, but for me, the sea is my meditation. And you imagine how fast was the life of an internet pioneer at that time. My life was completely crazy. They called me in Sandra Cida in the agency. That is a way in Portuguese to, to say like crazy Sandra, something like that. So I didn't meditate at that time what I do today. But the sea quieted my mind and really showed me that meditation doesn't need to be only, doesn't need to happen only when you sit still, you know. Uh, and you can find your your way to do it. it can be walking, can be gardening, whatever, but we really need to make space for new ways of thinking. If we don't find silence, 
we won't create anything new. So that was something very important for me. And another thing is I had to sail half the world at less than 10 miles per hour to really learn how to slow down. It took me 2,000 days, I'm still in the process. <laughs> but this is important, this is really, really important. Uh, I used to think that the fastest, fastest way to solve anything was to keep doing it until it, it is done. And now I understood that the fastest way to do something, sometimes is to, to give it a break, to pause, and to come back when we are ready. And I heard this phrase of Martin Luther that is, uh, really resonates with me now, like, I have so, much, so many things to do today that I will have to pray for three hours to be able to get it all done. And uh, it really makes sense, you know, slow down is something from someone that came from a 12 million people town. Uh, it is important. And another thing is, when I, when I think of the sea, who brought the sea into my life was my father. And my father was someone that taught me a lot of things about overcoming limits. When I was born, my father had already just lost his 19-year-old son. He had also lost his first wife, love of his life, both of them to cancer. His company had failed. And he was at that time, and he still is today, the most optimistic and positive person I have ever met. Two years ago, he had one of his legs amputated, and now he walks, he drives, he does everything by himself at 93 years old. And when I realized the importance of my father in my life, he really showed me that obstacles are opportunities for growth. And that changes completely the perspective that how we look into things. And I believe when we stop to think in what do we value in the people that come before us and the people that we love, we understand a lot about our values and about who we are. And yes, yeah, so maybe you could have a moment to reflect, you know, what do you value in the people that you love and who comes to your mind? That is important to understand who we are. So after two years um, living aboard, I got pregnant with our second daughter and we decided to go back to Brazil. And and then we moved to a small village called Parati. It's a small historical village by the coast of Rio, Rio de Janeiro. And as soon as we arrived, we realized the, the education infrastructure there was very, very poor. Uh, the few schools that existed didn't share the same values that we had. And then an amazing teacher that we met in Sao Paulo, Teresita, said to us, you should start a school. And I said to her, well, impossible. How come I, I will start a school? I don't know anything about education. And then she said, well, forget about the school. Do you know other people that share the same, uh, that think as you do? And I said, yes, we know lots of families that are frustrated with education. And can you start a network of other of parents? Said, well, this is super easy. We can start a network of parents. Then we invited other parents, around six couples, to our home to start to discuss the kind of education, the type of education that we would like to offer to our children. And two months after that, we have co-founded a Steiner School based on Waldorf education and centered in the community. So half the children pay and half uh, didn't pay. And this school has been going on for 10 years now. In March, it will be 11 years, and 100 families are supported. And also a second school started from the same group. And a lot of families moved to this small village now because of the school. So I really thought it was impossible, but maybe it was improbable, <laughs> but it's not impossible. And the important thing is to take the first step. 
And then after that, after taking care of that school for four years, we set sail again. And at that time was different. I think I started to look beyond the horizon. It was a different experience. And one day, we climbed that mountain in, in Malpiti, an atoll in French Polynesia. And that vision touched me deeply. It was the first time that I looked at, at, to the contour of the earth so clearly. And I understood that when we look from a distance, it really changes our, what we understand. This is not something new. The Overview Institute studies the impact of looking at the Earth from the space for more than 50 years. And astronauts say that when you look to the Earth from a distance, uh, all the problems that seem huge, they disappear. And there is a willingness of taking care of the planet and I didn't travel that far, but I could understand that when we look to the world from a distance, we can connect with what really matters. When we look to our feelings, to our thoughts and our desires from a distance, then we really know what matters. So since then, for me, I really, I think this journey was about looking from a distance to the planet. And that was important for us. And then, things that matter can change over time. So when we arrived in New Zealand, we didn't have plans to live here. We just arrived for the cyclone season, so that is a time that you don't sail, so you have to stop. So we stopped in New Zealand. And then someone said, oh, there is a Steiner school here, you should have a look. And, oh, if it's a Steiner school, maybe the girl should learn proper English for a term. That could be nice. Oh, maybe we should get to know the country. Wow, we like the values here. We like the people. We like the nature. Maybe we should try. And because we have lived before in smaller places, we know it is not easy to find a combination of quality of life and quality of relationships with a good infrastructure for work and for education. That's not easy to find this combination. So we thought, wow, maybe we should give it a try and live in New Zealand for a while. And after we made that decision, my father had a very serious problem of health and I had to go to Brazil with our daughters. And I spent three months there and then I realized after seeing so many other ways of living, it wouldn't be easy to stay there with our two daughters in a 12 million people town. But I, was, I felt to be very divided because I was living abroad for 10 years. So that was the time to be with them, you know, to be with my father as well. So I, I started to think I need to find a way to go back to Brazil often. And then after one month, I secured a contract that I could, I could uh, scale an innovation company in Brazil from my home in New Zealand, and that would take me to Brazil every three months. And that's what I've been doing for the past three years. And for me, it was very liberating because I could understand that I didn't need to choose between Brazil or New Zealand. I could live in Brazil and New Zealand. And as I spoke to many to others today, I was so impressed to see how many people are living the same situations, being, you know, being invited to be more than one place at a time, and how can I do it? And I think if we start seeing that it's possible to be here and there, then it changes completely what we can achieve. Like, you're in the same situation as well. And I think it, we live really in a world of uh, new possibilities emerge nowadays. And when I first started to work remotely back in 2005, I mo we moved to a small city, to Parachi, that was four hours 
from my hometown. But at that time, that distance was too great. And I had to go back often to deliver the work. I tried all sorts of combinations. I would go every other week, two weeks in one place, one in the other, every three weeks, all sorts of combinations. But the fact is, in 2005, we didn't have the technology, but most important, we didn't have the mindset, the culture, to make that happen. And now, working from New Zealand, with Brazil or with Europe or with other places. Uh, it's closer than it was for our drive at that time. And so I could experience this freedom of being able to work everywhere, to, to be able to work anywhere, to everywhere. And many of you should have similar experience. Uh, Digital nomads are increasing every day. But for me, the, the important thing is not that we can work everywhere. We just need a good internet connection. We need to have discipline. And we need to have reputation with people that trust us, that we will deliver the work wherever we are. These are the ingredients. And we have the freedom. But for me, it's much more profound than that. Because when geography is not the limitation, it changes everything. It really changes. And that's the big question for me right now. Because I have lived in smaller places. And I know it can be hard to find work, meaningful work. But I also lived in big cities. And I know it's very hard to have the mindset to have the headspace to really understand what matters. So for me, how can we, we take the best out of the two places? How can we, we help shape a future that is sustainable? Because I think this is crucially important. We won't find the answers uh, in New York, in Sao Paulo. We won't find the answers in these places because the rhythm of life in this place doesn't allow us to have meaningful connections, to have enough time, to have enough headspace, to understand what is really important. So for me, this is a crucial question. And that's why this gathering for me and New Zealand is so important. And why for me the combination of places is what makes me complete. Because I really need to be close to my family, my culture, my origin, the creativity of Brazil, the innovation that I have there. But I'm not complete if I'm there because I don't have the center, I don't have the headspace, I don't have the community life to, that can help me understand what matters. And here, I really feel, I think different from New Zealand. I really think different from New Zealand. I realize different things. I am able to achieve different things. But if we don't find a way of not working in New Zealand, because people ask me all the time, yesterday two different people asking me, how can you live in a small city? How can you do it? What is the secret? And for me, the secret is to work from New Zealand with the world. It's not to work in New Zealand, it's to work from New Zealand. And I think this, it can be a small change, but it changes everything. So that's how I see myself now, someone that works from New Zealand, but with the world. And so from New Zealand, because the, this place makes a difference in the way we think. Here we have the right environment to really create what matters in the world. But if we can create solutions that can go to the world, it's not that we are just thinking in global solutions. I totally agree that we, we need to find, to live locally, to have this community spirit. But we need to spread this with, to, with the world so it's sustainable as well. And so it has the impact that we want as well. So for me, this, this makes a lot of difference. And maybe can... We can talk later on about it as well in the session in the afternoon, what it really means. And the important for me, being here, 
now is that I believe the future is the present we create. And when I look back into my life, everything I learned by doing, everything happens. I didn't plan. I am from Brazil. Brazilians, we first act and then we think. It's completely different from the Germans that think in every detail and the last thing that they do is the action. So we are completely the opposite. We first do and then we think. So I never plan. Everything that happened in my life just happened. But when I look back and I, I think, wow, this is amazing that we can really create today what we want to see tomorrow. And I think that's why I think it's so crucially important the moment that we are living now with the Edmund Hillary Fellowship. Because it is huge when a country decides to create a new kind of visa, to create a whole infrastructure to support entrepreneurs who come to this country to address war challenges. This is huge. This is really means a lot. And for me, that vision was one of the reasons why I decided to stay. Because uh, I really want to, to create things that can make a difference. Uh, and so I think this is a very important moment that we live in. And I really uh, would like you to ask you to think about what fi which future would you like to create? And which future can we create together? So in this afternoon, we will have an opportunity to have a, a circle, a one-on-one -on -one conversation. And I would, I'm very interested to know other stories of people, what are the challenges that others faced when geography is not a limitation, when you know working in different places, how to make it sustainable. Because I think if we can create a sustainable way, then it can make a difference. Thank you.